The first steps in assembling the P6E Hawk are to install the aileron servos and to get them ready I have cut off three of the four arms, expanded the outer hole to install the grommets and eyelets and attached a nine inch servo extension wire and secured it with tape. The servo is now going to be centered and then it will be ready to install onto the hatch cover. The next, <clears throat> the next step involves removing the cover from the aileron well and securing wood blocks to it as shown in the instructions. With a, those are secured with epoxy, then drilling with a 1 16th drill a hole and mounting it in place with a screw. Here we have it mounted in place. While that's there, I use a mounting screw to drill, uh, to create holes and lines and ridges into the block so that uh, there's something for the screw to attach to. Remove the screw, use a little thin CA to harden it, <clears throat> and then install it. But before that, we will tape off, tie and tape off the lead to the enclosed string so that we can draw the wire into the center of the wing to get it into the fuselage. Then we will put this in place and secure it there with four screws. With the servo connected to the hatch cover and the uh, 9 inch extension line connected and I've now used a 3M tape to really secure it, I've got the string that was in the wing secured to the front of the lead and I'm going to pull it up through this hole. We've already done the right servo, plates in place, two screws secured, two almost done and it came up through this hole. Now if you use a longer extension you could come up the same hole. I thought I could probably make it look better by having both of them, um, one on each side, excuse me, so that they match rather than having two on one side. So, With the servo mounted into the wing there's hardwood right here I got out the aileron control horn, put it in place in line with the control arm, and drilled the holes so that it could be mounted in place. I then attached a clevis to the control rod with 20 turns, put it on here, lined it up, and bent it 90 degrees so it could go through the servo arm. I then trimmed it and put on the fastener to hold it in place, thus completing the assembly of the servo and aileron control for the top wing. When the correct brackets have been selected for the lower wing, they should all tilt to the outside, giving you an angle away from the fuselage for the struts. This is necessary because they mount further away from the fuselage on the upper wing than they do on the lower wing. The brackets on both top and bottom are on the outside portion of the struts. Having secured the outer struts on the lower wing, Per the instructions, I've now secured the cabane struts here in the center of the top wing on the underside and we will put the top wing onto the fuselage and connect it with the other struts temporarily to uh, determine exactly where to drill holes for the cabane struts on the fuselage and to make sure that we don't have our wings twisted in any way. The brackets line up approximately with the mounting holes not exactly, but we're going to uh, square things up by inserting the screws and tightening them up so that we can mark the uh, spots to drill holes for the cabane struts in the center, which are just resting in or near their proper mounting base. With the top wing temporarily mounted to the bottom wing, I pushed down in the center section and was able to mark where the uh, screws need to be drilled for the cabane struts. Now I'll remove the wing, remove the struts from the cabane struts from the wing and mount them to the fuselage per the instructions. The next step in the assembly was installing the uh, vertical and horizontal stabilizers with the attached elevator and rudder. 
They were already pre-built, pre-covered, pre-hinged. There was no work to do at all except to glue them in place. Now you're also going to, and part of the step is installing the servos, the control rods, etc. And they have you install them and then drill to add the uh, control horns. I like to add the control horns on a flat surface. So I trial fitted them, put the control rod into the plane with a clevis here on the end and lined up where the control horn should be. I'll show you that in just a second. And made marks and drilled and mounted them before they were officially installed. But I trial fitted them to get the position, did the installation and of the control horns and then mounted the uh, horizontal stabilizer and then the rudder. Now the instruction manual shows you trimming some of the covering off of the horizontal stabilizer and off of the vertical stabilizer. I had to do absolutely no trimming whatsoever for for the vertical. It, it was trimmed perfectly as it came. There was a little extra on one side of the I'm talking top and bottom on the uh, horizontal stabilizer and if I were just building it for myself I probably wouldn't have done anything I would have just um, added the epoxy glue and glued it in place but because I'm doing a review I did trim just a sliver away of the uh, covering to give me even more contact wood to wood between the uh, fuselage and the um, stabilizer. Now here you see the control horn for the elevator the control rod has two bends in it to line it up with the control horn and the clevis connects there properly. The tail wheel is installed at this time and it has a rod that goes into the rudder and then a hinge that goes into the fuselage. The pin is glued into the rudder, the hinge is glued into the fuselage, there's a little bit of oil so that it would uh, not glue the hinge shut and as you can see this control rod gets bent out a little bit. The pin is right in the middle of this clevis, the way I mounted it, so that it the screws are on either side of that pin, and uh, assembly was nice and easy. And we'll go on to a, another video for the inside of the uh, servo installation. As the end part of that installation, they have you install the rudder, rudder servo and elevator servo, and then bend the wires up here so that they. Uh, are held on with fast links ready to go. Next I did the uh, receiver installation and that's right back there it's got velcro on the back or hook and loop connecting to hook and loop on the underside of the battery compartment and I have my uh, servos and my aileron Y connector plugged into it. I have the speed controller secured with hook and loop underneath the battery compartment and I have the wires going out the front bottom. Now I point this out because the instruction manual shows them coming out the side right here and they tricked me with that. That's where I had it initially. But before I mounted the motor I could tell that the motor pictures had it going under the center and there are raised edges here that would make it hard to make a turn. Now I will tuck the wires in after I've hooked up the battery and made sure that they're running in the proper direction. But the motor mounts four bolts and uh, I'm ready to move on to the next step. I've completed two more steps in the assembly process. There was four strips of tape, one here, one here, and then two matching on the opposite side. I made sure that the cowl was centered so that the motor was coming out and I had the propeller on there although not mounted just to make sure that it wouldn't touch the cowl at all so that there was clearance. I then drilled a hole and mounted one screw and then did a second one after checking it out, third and then a fourth. The screws were all removed, the holes were hardened and the cowl is now mounted in place. With that completed it was time to do the landing gear. Now the landing gear we already had the struts on, so I simply had to mount the wheels, which was onto the axle with two um, collars, one on the inside to keep it from rubbing, one on the outside, secured in place against a uh, flat piece to keep it in place. And then the pant went on, held on by the uh, two bolts with the locking washer and regular washer going through the strut into the pant. 
and the same on this side. So we now have the plane basically complete. I'm going to be mounting the lower wing onto the plane and then the top wing. Then I'll add the propeller. There's two other things to do. That's to put a windshield in here, should I decide to add it, and the turtle back here, which will be done with white glue, um, Formula 500, that will take hours to uh, set up. So that'll be taped in place, and we'll come back when we've completed those parts of the assembly. Well, as you can see, I've reattached the wings to the plane. I've installed the propeller on the fuselage. I've also started the process. I've got uh, Formula 500 glue for the turtle deck and the windshield. Not thrilled about the windshield. I may knock it off trying to put the battery in the battery compartment, which is underneath the uh, wing in the fuselage. I do have one last step, and that is to make a channel right here for the aileron wires to go in on each side and uh, be out of sight. Right now they're just dangling, so I'm going to let the glue dry before I play with that. I probably should have done it before I put the top wing back on since it's going to be right next to the cabane strut. Now that I've basically got the plane finished, I can tell you the single most difficult part for me was getting these on properly. There's two screws that hold them on, it would, or bolts, you'd think it would be very simple. I could get one in on each side, but I couldn't get both in very easily. So if I were to do it again, I would ream out the uh, strut, I'll make it a little bit bigger so I can get the bolts, because they actually screw into the fiberglass pants rather than any, they just slide through the uh, strut. But I had difficulty lining up the second one and getting that done. And that's one thing I would change. Otherwise, I've covered it in my notes in regards to the assembly of this plane. I started on Friday. It's Sunday lunchtime, and it is assembled.